I'm here with artist Seth Apter, and Seth, you told us that we're going to be working on something very minimalist, a kind of reductive painting technique. Yes, usually I'm all about the layers, but today I'm actually going to show you ways to take away the layers, but you're going to create something special in the process. Super cool. Ready, Let's get started. Ready to go? I'm ready all to right, rock. All right, so you're going to just choose any kind of acrylic paint okay. to start. You're going to just take one color, and one of the things I like about this project is that you don't need a paint palette. You're just going to work directly on the panel that you're using. Now, do you have to use a panel? Could it be paper? You can do it on paper, you can do it on canvas, on wood panel. This works on anything, this process. And when you're picking a color, are you purposely picking something that's like light, dark, in the middle, bright? Does it matter? Well, it actually does matter, and it's a good question. You're gonna pick three colors for this process, mm -hmm. and you just wanna make sure you do contrasts to your colors. So if you start light, you're gonna then go light, dark, light. If you start dark, you're gonna go light, dark, light. Uh, light, dark. Dark, light, dark. I yeah, got it. We got it. You know, okay, we know. <laughs> All right. But it doesn't matter color wise. Like if you go warm, do you go warm, cold, warm? Doesn't or matter, it doesn't matter. That's your it's choice. It's just the lights and the darks. No. Okay. But one thing that's really important you might notice is I'm painting dry. I did notice that. That's why you're getting so much texture in here. You're not using any water. Correct. So you might see some white show through, and that's fine. Okay. Once you finish this layer, you need to let it dry. That's really okay. key. So it has it's to be really bone important. dry bone to the dry. touch. Okay. Otherwise, you cannot do this process. Okay. So we're going to then pop that in the water. We're mm -hmm. going to move to another brush and another paint color. And One we're of gonna... the things I love about cheap chip brushes like this is you can just, you know, have 20 of them. Oh, yeah. I have thousands of them. <laughs> <laughs> and they're the only ones I use, and I'm, and I'm fine with throwing them away when and I'm done. And you know, done. when they get trashed, I was also going to say you can make art out of them. You can glue them onto your Absolutely. canvases. You can pretend you can that it was purposeful. Yeah, it, right? super cute. So you can see this is a dark color compared okay. to the lighter color underneath. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do is just spread it out. Still dry brushing. Still dry brushing, but I'm going to spread it out with a panel this size, maybe in a quarter of the panel. Because okay. you have to work fast because you do not want it to dry. I am going to take one of my favorite tools, which is embossed wallpaper. I love this because it has design, it has texture, and because it's a wallpaper surface, it doesn't crumble like, like textured paper. Okay. And I'm going to lay it down, and I'm just going to swipe with my fingers. I'm not going to go like that, because I don't want circles. I want a oh, nice, pure swipe. So you want to rub instead of circling. Now, could you use a piece of embossed paper? You could, but you're not going to get as much out of the paper because it's okay. going to start getting fibrous and, and soggy. Fall apart. So the wallpaper, <gasps> it's a stamp. Pretty good, right? Yeah. That's super cool. So I'm doing two for one here. This is a deboss technique. Mm -hmm. You can see as I do it, I'm taking the blue color away from the color underneath, and the lower layer cover is showing through. With right. this, I don't have to worry. I can just let it be like that until and I use it the next time. And I have a piece of collage time. paper too to, that you could use. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. This is going to go in my art. Now, can you use this over and over and over again, or will there be a point where your embossed wallpaper, pe yeah, is no good anymore because it has too many layers of paint yes, on it or some, something? Yes. At some point, it fills up the spaces and you can't use it again. But at that point, just like you said, you can use it in collage. And sometimes along the way, it just looks so perfect with a color on it, I say, time to, time to use as a material. Yeah. So the other thing is, not only am I doing this so that I make this look nice, Right. but it's because I need to dry it so the paint doesn't keep going back on there. Oh. So once I finish that, yeah. thank you, thank you, it looks something like that. And I'm so going to do cool. the final technique okay. that I'm going to show you today. And this is using a stencil, subtractive stenciling. Stencils. And masks are both fun things, but they're usually different. So can you tell, for people who aren't sort of clear, I mean, I, I'm looking right here, and this is clearly a stencil, Correct. meaning there are holes in it that the paint or the ink or whatever goes through. So Correct. then what's a mask? So a mask protects the underlayer. So whatever you see in terms of design is actually the underlayer rather than the paint that you've added on top. So you're already starting the opposite way that I work with the stencil, which is normally I put the stencil on a dry surface and then put the paint through it. Instead, Correct. you put the paint down first. First. I'm putting the paint down first, and now I'm going to take the paint away. Remember, this is subtractive paint technique, so I'm using a baby wipe. So One of this the, is why that layer needed to be dry. Exactly. The layer underneath, if it's not dry, you pull that up too. One of the great things about um, acrylic paint is it dries permanently, but when you catch it when it's still wet, you can do this. You can be as perfect and get everything out, or you can leave it a little bit cloudy. And when you do that, you see the <gasps> stencil design Oh, it's is so cool. It's pretty cool. So then I would do, with a panel this large, either use the same stencil or another stencil. So here's my question, because you're about to do this. Are you just going over some of those areas that you've already done the reductive? Oh my gosh, yes, Seth. Can you you're ruining that? it. What I are you know, doing? I know. Well, that's the thing I love about art. 
and mixed media art in particular, it, you can be as free as you want and as messy as you want. And I could do this again. For example, let this layer dry. Yeah. And then I can go in with another layer of paint and do another oh stencil gosh. over it. In a and different color, that would correct. be amazing and so, cool. So even though we're subtracting, mm -hmm. we're actually adding a layer every time we subtract. This is like that light dark, light dark thing I'm going, we're adding, taking away, taking away, exactly, adding. Exactly, exactly. Yes. This is also the kind of math I can do, <laughs> adding and subtracting. So once you've done that, yeah. you have something that looks like that. Super cool. Right now, if you look closely, you can see the design mm -hmm. from the embossed wallpaper underneath. And that's why you wouldn't just add a stencil to it because that would actually cover that up. I was up. gonna say, I like so much too that I like I look at this and I can't tell, is the blue on top of the white? Is the yes. white on top of the blue? Where did the purple come from? Is it collaged on? Like, how did that happen? I like when people can't tell how I make right? my art. So the final touch, I am gonna add layers. Okay. I can't stop myself. And it's basically the most fun part. And this is where you're gonna take a pen or a marker and you're just gonna very I see your incredible precision. Randomly. Yes, that's the key here. You have to measure it out perfectly. <laughs> Perfect so circles I'm every time. I'm choosing some darks. Mm -hmm. And a couple warms for that and contrast. Some warms, yes. And you know, if we look at the final piece that you have right here, we can see how you've done that beautifully. And this is certainly something that really anybody could do, Seth. Yeah, I think it's an easy thing to do. And I, I think it's not so obvious. So it's a fun thing to try. It's the opposite of what you might normally do. So just tell us before we go, how did you add the words? Oh, I added the words with rubber stamps on a separate piece of paper, and then I just glued them on, and then I did more doodling over. Oh, because more have is more. more. More is more. more. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. Absolutely.